so those who don't know me, uh, uh, I work for a company here in town called Paper Gut Interactive, where I'm a, a designer and developer. That's all of them over there. Um, uh, and yeah, I also uh, have been lucky enough to be the MC at a, a TopCon for the past four years. But I don't think I'm here to talk about any of that stuff. I think I'm here to talk about like all the weird stuff that I make. Uh, so this is a uh, mutated logo of the uh, Chattanooga Film Festival. And uh, as you can tell, it's just kind of made up of gooey, fleshy, floaty bits, uh, eyeballs and intestines, all kinds of fun stuff, and exposed femur at the bottom. Um, yeah, so I do that stuff. I also make creeps. Um, I call them creeps because creatures is too broad of a term, and I think monster is derogatory. Uh, I don't think it's very fair. We don't know these guys that well. Um, uh, and, you know, I like, this is kind of my art. This is uh, somewhere between illustration and, and just drawing um, compulsively. But I try to make these things have um, a little bit of a story in the illustration of themselves. Like, uh, it kind of makes you ask questions like, why is that guy carrying around a flaming triclops skull? I don't know. And he's got cool red flags on him. I guess he thinks that, you know, that's a pretty cool outfit. I don't even ask him about the guy on the... Uh, on the right there, I have no idea. Uh, sometimes they have something to do with me. Uh, a little personally, I struggle with uh, um, insomnia. So this guy, and I call insomnia the visitor, so whenever I can't sleep, I just think the visitor is here. It's a little weird, but that's the whole point. Um, so I call this one uh, the visitor, let him sleep. Uh, so sometimes they're a little personal, um, but really, you know, we can't talk about weird without talking about its ugly cousin, normal. And uh, normal is kind of like a narrative that somewhere some council got together and said, this is what we all think, you know, this is all normal. And sometimes like we create normal narratives in our own day-to-day -day lives. Um, and I have kind of a weird love-hate relationship with normal and, uh, and, and sometimes my I have a unique relationship with weird, uh, but to me, uh, weird is really about freedom. You know, it's about uh, curiosity and playing with things and being kind of open to what's going to happen next. Um, and I feel good when I'm making weird things or things that people consider weird. Uh, and I think a lot of, uh, which wasn't always the case, uh, but everything I do now, all my work. Uh, I'm trying to please one supreme client, one person who I think uh, kind of created cool for me. Um, and uh, that is me at seven years old. Uh, so there's no more self-actualized person than this guy right here. Like he knew what he wanted. You know, he knew he wanted to draw, he wanted to tell stories. Uh, you know, uh, I was just so in my head all the time as a kid, like I just sort of, it was hard for me to stay focused, you know, and uh, parents and teachers alike, like they just had no idea, you know, what the hell to do with me. Uh, they couldn't tell if I needed to go into like remedial classes or if I needed to go into like the gifted classes. They had no clue. So as a result, I wound up uh, getting held back in first grade, which is like, you know, the immediate weirdo, because what are you supposed to do? Like, your friends kind of, or the kids that you know kind of move on, and then these new kids show up, and then you have to kind of like show them the ropes of first grade, <laughs> you know, like, uh, here are the blocks, you know, you can go to the bathroom over there, you know, if you need to, but there's no naps anymore. Yeah, that's, forget about it. Um, and, and so, uh, growing up in Ringgold, which is right down the road, anybody from Ringgold? my sister. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't get out much. Um, so, growing up in Ringgold, like, if you weren't, like, the super hot chick with awesome hair, you know, or, the, like, the cool, funny dude with also awesome hair, like, you know, you got a mark on your back pretty early, you know, like, you were immediately considered a weirdo. So, sort of what I did, what I ran to is a security blanket. It was like all the awesome shit that was coming out when I was a kid. So like I was obsessed with like, uh, you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse, Star Wars, The Labyrinth, you know, I, I just, 
wrapped up in this stuff and it sort of insulated me uh, quite a bit, you know, and uh, kind of helped shield me from normal and what people expect. Uh, and so what you do, like when you're a weird little kid, uh, you, you know, you quickly find other little weird kids and you get your posse together. So I don't know if anybody knows what movie this is from. It's from a movie called Monster Squad. Uh, you probably show my age with that. But this movie is literally bananas. It's about these kids. It's kind of like the Goonies uh, fight. <laughs> they go up against all the universal monsters. So like they're fighting Werewolf and Frankenstein and Dracula and the Mummy. It's pretty amazing. It's on Netflix. You gotta watch it. So, you know, me and my buddies, we got super into comic books. And comic books was this place where I just started putting all my focus. And I loved it. I loved reading comic books. I loved, like, drawing. You know, and I'd just sit for hours and hours and hours and draw. And, uh, you know, it was awesome. Uh, I was kind of creating my own narrative of, of normal, like a new normal. Like, I'm a comic book guy. I'm a comic book artist, right? So... As you get a little bit older, like people say, man, you can't really do comic books all the time. You gotta grow up a little bit, you know? So I wound up kind of getting into uh, fine art. Uh, and this like was a love of mine in early high school. And I started getting into like the work of Robert Rauschenberg and Richard Diebenkorn and these like real, uh, Wayne Tebow, these real chin scratcher artists, you know? Like real deal stuff, you know? And, uh, you know, this dichotomy started happening inside of me where it was like, how can I be all angst-riddled painter, you know, and still kind of want to go home and draw Spider-Man, you know? Like, there was this kind of thing where it was like, I can't really be serious about this. And I can't show my teeth. Oh. They're going to Patton Towers. Anybody want to get on a bet? Um, so, um... Should I wait or keep going? Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, I really couldn't, like, indulge this love of sci-fi and comic book stuff and feel like I'm a serious, for real painter, you know? Uh, and so I kind of started getting a little angsty about that stuff. And, uh, and I kind of went into like my second grade love, which is playing music. That's me making a bass face. Um, <laughs> just something I do a lot. But, uh, so I played music in several bands you know, around town. I went on some tours and, and did some pretty fun stuff. You know? And I was like, you know, this is now kind of my normal. I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to be like the greats. Like, James Jameson, John Atwistle, you know, Getty Lee, you know, who doesn't want to be like Getty Lee? Also, I think I deserve points for getting Getty Lee in a presentation about design. Yes. Um, and so, um, yeah, so, you know, when you are in a band and you have like an art background, the first thing that you wind up doing is you start doing gig posters. So, like, it's just your, your secondary job. And also, when you're a bass player, I mean, you got to do what you can do. Uh, so this is like right when I started going back, I started call, what I like to call college part two. Uh, I went back to school for design, and uh, I started realizing like, hey, this is a cool place for me to put kind of my love of music and, uh, you know, uh, my love of art into one place. And like my love of comic books, like this stuff kind of lives here, you know? And it felt kind of natural. Uh, but then this thing kind of happens as you kind of start your career. You start doing designer things, you know. You start kind of like making sort of the same stuff, you know. You, you kind of, um, you get to this point to where it's like you're, you just kind of start to feel like you're just lining up pixels, you know. Like you're not really talking to yourself. And then I, I kind of have to apologize for this next slide. It's kind of graphic. Um, but it was a real turning point for me. Um, and it's, it's this turd right here. <laughs> So this is a poster that you're gonna look at and like maybe you're, you're saying like, it's not, you know, it's not that bad. When I made it, I was like, this just looks like a sad dude made this poster. You know, like it just, it's like the, I ran out of tricks. You know, there's three stock images being used on here from Shutterstock because it's like, screw it, I just gotta get a poster together. Um, 
Uh, I'm using like Gotham with a drop bevel shadow. I mean, you probably can't see it too well. I'll email this poster to anybody that wants to look at it and just really drink it in. Um, so, um, yeah, and so, you know, you can't really tell now. There's sort of like a star field behind the car and, and um, you know, there's uh, like this uh, pixel, um, like color halftone thing going on. And I'm just like making a gig poster, you know, in my mind. I'm just like, this is what a gig poster looks like. Awesome. So when it came time to make my next gig poster, I said, I can't really do it like this anymore. Um, you know, I can draw a little bit. So I did this poster. And it's got its own problems, but I know that, like, you know, some people draw way better than me. And I, you know, I draw better than some people. But I knew that, like, whatever I made next, like, it had to be something I made. Like, I knew that all the assets, I couldn't pull stock photo crap or whatever, it had to be uh, me. And the inside joke about this is that that band, uh, Hey Penny, they're kind of notorious for, like, losing guitarists. So <laughs> they were always kicking them out, so it's a guitarist separate hand on that. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so I started drawing things, and I reached out to my buddy uh, Chris Dorch, who... Uh, started the MAS Film Club, and I said, hey, let me draw your movie posters. And he was like, awesome. Uh, so I just started drawing his posters. And it was this place where I'd get to sort of design outside of designery thinking. Like, I would do dumb stuff to type. Like, here comes the devil. Like, it's got this, like, warp effect, you know? And I just pushed it around just because I could, you know? Um, I didn't have to be designery. Um, and I was really kind of able to like make, uh, try to fumble around and find my own style in some way. Uh, like when it comes time to do the uh, flying squirrel, like uh, the poster for the flying squirrel, I wanted it to be pulled out of the ground. And I knew I didn't want to do a composite. I didn't want to do some kind of uh, hack together Photoshop job. I was like, I'm going to draw it. I'm just going to draw that shit. It's just going to be that way. Um, you know, and I got to do like some really fun like mock up posters. Uh, for movies that got made. And then, you know, I started putting monsters and stuff. And I called them monsters back then because I wasn't really as sensitive as I am now about the term monster. So, so I started making monsters, and I knew that I wanted to kind of continue with this stuff, but I didn't want to take the time that it would take to make these kind of finished out, full color illustrations. So what I did, instead of like making one or two of those a month, I decided to make 365 not so finished drawings. So last year I started this project on Instagram called Your Daily Creep, and you can find the whole collection there uh, at yourdailycreep.com. So every day I um, drew a creep, and every single day I'd spend an hour to 45 minutes on just a pen and ink drawing, uh, sometimes watercolor, and I would post them on Instagram, and I knew that like not all of them are going to be good. Like, maybe a majority are going to be bad. Maybe a majority are going to be good. I had no idea, but I knew I was going to post them and just do it. And this kind of stream of consciousness sort of just happens where every day I'm just kind of like getting weirder and weirder and really just trying to be like, what is the most normal thing, you know, that I can think of and then just go the opposite. Uh, there's a guy up here, uh, second from the right, second from the right, uh, you know, he's wearing a big, my wife and I went up to Boston, it was super cold, and this is the creep that I had to do. So he's like got this fleshy winter outfit on. Uh, why not? You know, and I got to experiment with like all these different styles, like kind of more watercolory fun stuff. Uh, I did one whole week. It actually turned into maybe about a month of just tattoo flash that I did. Um, I, and I'm really hoping to get the one up here that says, uh, sword got broke. I really think that's funny. Or claw, y'all, is a really good one. Um, so I did these, and uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, the awesome people at Ava um, helped me put together Creep Show. And so Creep Show is like this place where, you know, I, I, Ava basically just let me take over the gallery, and they helped hang up all the creeps, like all 365 plus creeps. Um, and this is a little video of that. You'll get to kind of see the scope of what's going on. And it's pretty trippy that this is, I spent a whole year doing this. 
I love that the screen is also wavy. And this was just a project just to, to um, also at the time, like I was learning a lot more about web development and it was kind of like, I still got to keep my toe in like traditional media, which is really kind of, kind of fun. Kind of gives your brain a break. Yeah, they just kind of keep on going. It's over. No, it's not. <laughs> it was pretty wild. And the people at Ava, uh, they, they helped, I mean, they hung all this stuff up. I just showed up with this stuff like in a box. And there's a big father time there, end of the year. And yeah, it was like a really fun show. This is a poster for the show that I did. Uh, and it was great, it was a blast. Like we had to run people out of Ava after the booze ran out. Like they stuck around, which was kind of crazy. I've never been to an art show where that happened before. Um, and uh, it was great, it was a real learning experience. You know, I really couldn't have done it to, my wife hates this slide, without uh, the help of my uh, wife, Hayne, and uh, our, my favorite creep. Uh, Ron or Ronald or Roginald Longbody, you know, if you're not into the whole brevity thing, but I had this, like, epiphany, right? Like, all the work that I'm making is kind of, it's all mine, you know? Like, if I'm making this stuff, which, by the way, this guy on the right here is kind of, like, totally what I'm going for with this speech. Like, he's some sort of weird slugoid creature who is He's obviously got friends because they've helped him put together this like fake jaw, like he's got a jaw stuck in his open, <laughs> I don't know what you'd call that, it's an open neck thing and then he's kind of had somebody come along and, and help him put together like a little hanging skull here, you know, and then they even gave him like these little bone prosthetic arms, you know, just, and it's like his attempt to be like, look, I'm a normal person, I got hands and a head, you know, I'm not just a slugoid. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the same guy that like makes this stuff and who hopes that, can, uh, that these little things can tell a story in themselves is also the same guy that like does this stuff and does this stuff, right? Stranger Things. I mean, who doesn't, when these shows come out, like Stranger Things or Lost or something, it makes me so happy because I hear like math people talk about science fiction stuff, you know, people that aren't into science fiction stuff are talking about weird things, and I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been screaming about my entire life, so I can do this stuff, and this stuff is all informed by my weirdness, you know, and then I can push, like, other logo ideas through this weirdness filter, you know, uh, and so everything is kind of, I feel like, I'm creating my own narrative of weirdness, you know, that I can kind of push all work through. And uh, that makes this guy, like, super happy. Uh, yeah. Thanks.